Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the FamVestor Podcast. I'm your host, Sunny Burns. And I'm your co-host, Sunmarie Burns. So today we are talking about, well, this was a special request from one of our biggest fans to discuss why we parent the way we parent. So I thought that was kind of interesting and, you know, I was thinking about it. And, you know, we do parent very differently than everyone else we kind of see. And I think his question kind of stemmed because, like, last podcast we were talking about how we don't use strollers and how, especially in America, that's just very different um, to not use strollers. And that might, might seem like a small thing, but it really trans or kind of goes to a lot of different things that we do and my mom Changes. still doesn't understand why we don't. A use lot of trailers. people don't understand it. Like even even yeah, I don't know. Anyway, we're gonna go into this kind of stuff. But before we do, I want to tell you about a cool thing we did. I think last week we booked a trip to Florida. Yes. Actually, we just came back from Florida, but we did book <laughs> one year we in like advance. We like Florida. <laughs> Actually, you have to book eleven months in advance, day of, at eight a.m. Um, so if you don't know, you know, if you try to book like huge, like national parks and things like really popular ones, this um, is for camping, national park camping, right, right. right. It's, you have to book like usually a year in advance for like the good ones, especially mm -hmm. if you want to get like permits to like hike half dome at Yosemite or something like that. So anyway, we really want to go to the Florida Keys and we want to do it for cheap because the Keys, you know, they're really warm. It's tropical, clear, very great for snorkeling. Beautiful area, but very expensive. Right, you were going to pay $300 a night for a hotel mm -hmm. room. I can't seem to use my AFV club. Um, so state campgrounds, they're only $30 a night, but... You gotta book, they book out the day they're available and you can only book them 11 months in advance. So, you know, I've, the last couple days I've been 8 a.m., they refresh um, for that next day. So I've been just stalking, stalking, stalking. I finally got it. I didn't get it at eight because I missed it. You know, so there's like <laughs> 20 people trying to get that same campsite that opens up. Um, but at eight fifth after 15 minutes, it resets the clock. Like if you didn't check out of your cart, right, then it becomes available again. So at 8.15, I snatched it up. So we got one he week. He was very excited. <laughs> Shook me awake in bed and said, I booked it. I booked it. I'm like, what? Yep. <laughs> and uh, you can book, I think, up to two weeks out. So I only booked a seven-day trip because um, I think that's that's good enough for the keys. Okay. So anyway, uh, that was just a fun little update that I'm excited about. I'm all so excited because I'm going bi bike packing this weekend, I think. We'll see. <laughs> Uh, this, I don't know, I, I ran into uh, this... A test run. A test run, yeah. I ran into this a Facebook group in northern New Jersey where I'm from. It's called, like, New Jersey Bike Packing, whatever. And then I saw they have, like, this trip that they do every year this weekend. I'm like, oh, we want we want to do a family bike packing trip this June. So I figured before I take the whole family out, I should do a trial run by myself and see what kind of gear we need and what kind of packs we need on our bikes. Because we want to do 100 miles in yeah. three days. We'll see if we can do it with the kids. <laughs> Maybe we should do it four days or tone down the 100 miles to 50. But uh, 100 miles is the goal right now. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, enough about that. Let's get to the show. You're listening to the FamVestor Podcast. If you're looking to raise your family with intention, gain financial independence, and live a life of true freedom, you're in the right place. Join us as we explore together how to create thriving families. Because strong families are the cornerstone for a world at peace. So oftentimes a question we get asked is, how do you get your kids to go hiking with you? Right. You know, we can never get our kids to go hiking. It would be a complete disaster. And we get asked that a lot, especially since we go hiking a lot and people are and aware of that. And backpacking. You know, yep. Kaylee's, last year she was only like six when summer end, or six months when summer ended and she'd been, you know, bike backpacking like six times. Right. And so we do a lot outdoors, a lot of adventure stuff, a lot of strenuous hikes you know we did um around here there's a, a hike on mount tamami um in the new jersey Delaware pennsylvania border and it's actually a very challenging hike but we hiked the whole thing with all three of our kids and friends with with us um i and my friend we had babies strapped to us and then the boys they just walked on their own that's that's uh at the time they were three and a half and five and a half and it's really, kids do what's expected of them. You know, uh, we interviewed Nancy Vogel, who took her 10-year-olds, and, you know, for three years, they traveled from Alaska to Argentina, 17,000 miles on bikes. And we asked her, like, how did you, how did you do do that? And she was like, 
it's all it's all they knew you know they were like that's what we're doing and so they do it children rise to the occasion yeah and you know a lot of times i think the things that we limit ourselves and our families to are based off of constructs or limiting ideas that we have about what we can't can and can't do right and like- and for us you know hiking was something that we just felt was so important you know it creates so much value in life memories experiences a connection and familiarity with nature and the outdoors um there's there's a lot said about the benefits of fresh air and green nature in terms of like helping you just like de-stress and calm down and you know kids get really wired sometimes and whenever we go out in nature it seems to soothe them and calm them and they just are more well balanced as are we so it was always something that was super important to us to be able to hike and so when little kids came around it wasn't something we were gonna stop doing all of a sudden so we just made it important to to take our kids with us and as soon as they could walk we would have them walk the hikes you know we do little hikes to start you know nothing too extreme but little half mile walks or or whatever on a flat trail and our kids really took to it they loved walking they and there was there was no stroller to they fall weren't back used on. to a stroller normally anyway in our day-to-day life you know we didn't take our walks around the neighborhood with the stroller we just took the walks with our little toddlers toddling alongside us with occasionally being carried when needed i feel like since kaylee's been born she's over a year now you know i think your mom takes her out on a stroller but other than your mom we've like never taken her out on a stroller it's a special treat (laughs) (laughs) but she doesn't even like it she wants to get out of there yeah she's very uh eager to walk as were all of our kids from the get-go right but i'm I'm thinking also you know like so we're talking about strollers here but also we just came back from a trip to florida and we drove 17 hours down you know we we just in the last week we've driven 20 2900 miles so almost across the country and we did that with three kids in the back of our minivan and you know we didn't have devices or ipads that they're going through and in one so on the way down we stopped in south carolina with a good friend um north carolina, north carolina. and uh that was a great time but on the way back we just went from florida central florida orlando area all the way to new jersey straight um, shot yeah we, it was like, we took a couple like one hour rest breaks right but... yeah it was like from f- from 4 a.m till 2 a.m so it was like 22 hours of like on the road travel time yeah and I think most people would hear that and think that sounds like a complete nightmare and disaster. Yeah. But you know what? It was actually really pleasant. And honestly speaking, that's why we went all the way through. You know, we had plans perhaps to stop midway yeah. if needed and get a hotel. But the kids were doing so awesome. They weren't complaining. They were entertaining themselves with their coloring pages and their, their audiobook. Audiobook they were listening to and a few little toys they had with them. And then we would stop by the playground or stop to eat and picnic out um, on like a, a field and they could right. run around. And, and that was enough for them. Yeah. And it was really great. And, and again, that's another thing that I think a lot of parents uh, have a limiting notion of, oh, little kids can't handle long car rides but i really do think it is something that if you start them young get them used to it it becomes a part of your way of life we do this quite often it's not like this was a a once in a a lifetime experience for them this is probably their oh, yeah the older ones i don't know Valen's 20th time or whatever mm, no well we not all the way to florida yeah. but long road trips yeah. to new england Four or five hours or we to do all the time pennsylvania or ohio although i think this was kaylee's first one and in yeah. the beginning she was fighting it i feel like she was like what's going on here why am i in this <laughs> car in seat, seat. <laughs> all this whole time but you know after the first like five hours of that first leg you know i feel like she kind of got used to it and, and granted realized, okay this is what's going on now granted you know? you know our strategies wake up really early and then you know the kids just are like either really dazed or just fall back asleep for the first five hours yeah or they're so. very calm in the morning i mean so obviously there's there are strategies to try to make it a better experience and definitely yeah. rising early to start out on your trip um, helps because the kids are very docile and most likely sleeping as well. So mm-hmm. that happened with us both times where we got like a good five to seven hour stretch that right, we could right just drive 
and they were sleeping and that's a whole bunch of miles and hours we could knock out of the way right before they were even awake yeah because once they get you know into their day and they're awake they'll get restless after about right. two and a half hours and you don't want to be stopping every hours. hour because then you'll never get there right. right um yeah but again that you know it, it it stems back to concepts and what is important in your family and you know the the trust that your kids can handle these these um adventures and this way of life that you're choosing right. and and stroller is another thing with us too you know i feel like our kids are really active and walk a lot and can come with us on hikes and adventures because they aren't reliant on being pushed around and carried and lugged on someone else's back or shoulders or a, a vehicle of some sort and because of that, because they're self-reliant, we can handle more of it too because we're not like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to carry them up this mountain. Positive yeah. loop. Yeah. And if they get tired, you know, we don't push them. We we take a break. We sit down. We relax. We recharge, have a snack, and then continue on. Um, and it works really well in our, in our family dynamic. So yeah. that's definitely something that we like doing. It's something uh, we don't see too many families doing, um, but, it, you know, it can it can be done if if uh, you're inspired to to work it into your lifestyle right and you know so many parents feel like they need like the newest the best you know brand new only the cleanest stuff for their kids i don't know we don't really ever felt i think it might be the way we were raised you know we were both coming kind of from a lower income families and we were just you know whatever we could get we would use and play with and so you know i'm looking i'm thinking about my garage right now and it's stuffed with bicycles uh, for the kids, we have like five bicycles at this point, and none of them we've paid for. Most of them we found in the garbage, and one of them in the garbage was like brand new, never used, still had like the rubber spoky things on the wheels. <laughs> and it was just like, how can you throw this away? I, it, it wasn't even like the tires were deflated, it was like perfect. perfect. Get on um, it and ride. <laughs> it was pink, but you know, it's pink, and Valen's ridden, and I think, and Al, it's Alvin's favorite bike just a pink girl's bike but he loves it and he doesn't care at, at three and a half they don't right really right care. right and that it'll be perfect for kaylee exactly. <laughs> it was meant for her and we got it before she was born and yeah so i guess that's part of our parenting philosophy or our family lifestyle is we you know we like to you know not spend unnecessarily when we don't have to and to just really utilize um second chance things um i think that it's great to to give, you know, not waste money on things, buying them brand new right. when there's perfectly good ones you can upcycle from someone else, either right. and gifted we, and we, or purchased or found. Yeah, and I think the kids are being raised in a way, you know, sometimes it's kind of a little, like we're, we're in our society, we're a little ashamed, like, oh, he's like, is it garbage day today? Because we got to go look around for the good garbage. And, um, but I, I kind of enjoy that. And I like that. And, you know, when we are in a store, and there is something brand new, and he's like, I want that. I'm like, yeah, sorry, it's it's too expensive. It's twenty dollars here. When we go to a garage sale, you can buy that for fifty cents. And you know, we we take the time to explain those things to our kids. And I think, I think it's having a very good positive impact uh, to them. You know, they're getting a sense that you know we're not saying you know we can't afford it necessarily, uh, which was the case a lot of times in our upbringing. Uh, but now that's not really the truth. But it's just that you know it's not we, worth it. Right. We we explain to them more like you can buy it new. You are able to. We are able to. But is it the best use of your money, or could you perhaps you know buy something very similar secondhand and save more money for a, a, another purpose that might be more well spent right yeah so i think we're taking a very honest and truthful but age appropriate um view with with teaching our kids a lot of concepts that maybe some parents shy away from you know parents shy away from the subject of money um like you know our kids asked us like or valen asked us the other week how much money we may have or how much money we made and we, i just told him uh he has no idea what those numbers mean at this point but i just told him um and but then you know we have these conversations about money all the time even like sex we talk about sex with the kids and talk um you know very age appropriate we started out with little uh like picture books about 
you know, how, how all animals have eggs and just the process of fertilization. And so, you know, these age appropriate conversations we're ha having with them and we're, we're trying not to, you know, be untruthful and come up with some completely fictitious idea that they're going to have to uh, do away with at some point in their uh, uh, upbringing. Uh, but just trying to, you know, always be truthful, always be honest, and always be communicating with them, knowing that we are a resource, that if they have questions, we're more than happy to answer with them. And that, you know, it's just a step-by-step -step journey of parenting where we're going to be informing them with all these uh, life lessons that they're going to need in their upbringing. I think another cool thing that we do is we're very active people. You know, um, right now we're signed up for a volleyball league. We go every Monday night. Um, so the kids see us being active, you know, they saw us doing 75 hard, doing two workouts a day for 40, for 75 days, um, and all these other things that we've always do. Um, and I think that, re you know, I ran my marathon and that really inspired our kids. Um, and I think, you know, that really made the conversation of having goals really easy. Like even when we were just in Florida, you know, I was like, Valen was doing really great swimming on his own now. Um, and there was this nice pool there, really warm water. And he did one lap and he did two laps. And I was like, oh, great. He's like, and I'm like, how many laps do you think you can do? And he's like, oh, I forget what he said. I think he said like um, five or something. So he did five and I'm like, can you do more? And then he's like, yeah, I could do more. So we did six. And then we went all the way up to 10. And that's, you know, it was like, a, it was a pretty decent sized pool. And he did 10 laps. I was pretty impressed by him because 10 would have tired me out for sure. Um, and, you know, even just the ripple effect of when you see this sort of active culture in your family, it rubs off on all your family members, like our younger son, who is not really a, a swimmer yet he finally grew an interest in seeing us and seeing his brother practicing swimming to actually want to try. And so we put on his swim trainers and he was doing really great by mm -hmm. the end of the week because he was motivated, he was inspired, and he just saw that, you know, I can do this. This is a part of life. This is, you know, what we do in this family and I'm going to try. Yeah. Um, a, we love those little puddle jumper uh, life vest things. Those are great for the kids just to enjoy themselves in the pool, get used to the water. But once they're really ready to start swimming, I love this. Uh, we bought, maybe I'll put a link in Amazon, but it's just a little like rubber, not a rubber, but a foam uh, like it's backpack. Like a foam block in three sec three or four sections. Four sections, yep. And you can remove each section. To um, have less flotation. Less flotation as the child gets and it just stronger wraps, in swimming. It just wraps around their waist. And yeah, you just take away one foam block at, at a time as they as they need less and less flotation. Their muscles are getting stronger and they're able to do it better. Right. And it's a, it's a tool you can use to help them learn to swim while you're there with them next to mm -hmm. them. Their arms are completely free. They don't have big, bulky flotation things around their shoulders. They can really experience the movement of swimming, kicking their feet right. with just that little extra lift on their back and their belly to give them a little more buoyancy as they're trying to learn yeah, to swim. Yeah, that's how Valen learned to swim last summer and, and it was working well with Alvin. He's not there yet, but he was down to just two of those foam things. Yeah. And he was doing well. Which is great coming from him just not really being able to swim at all mm -hmm. um, prior to that and fully relying on floaties right but yeah just talking about goals you know we we were making goals at the beginning of the year so i brought the kids along and you know they started making their goals i know i talked about that in a previous episode uh but you know they accomplished their goals just just two months in you know one was to run a mar uh one a mile for valen and a half mile for alvin they're still working on their handstand goal they're still work we were working on it today their handstands um but yeah, like it's. I think it's cool for them to see to have goals and then you know start accomplishing those goals too. You know they they they're signed up for two triathlon, two little kid triathlons this uh, this summer. So I'm excited for that. I think they're pretty excited about it. And I think that was one of the reasons Valen did ten laps because I was like, you know, if you can do ten laps, this will that'll probably be the distance of the triathlon swim, the 75 meters you have to do. Um, and I think that kind of inspired him, you know, having that goal and knowing. And also, like, when we go bicycling, he's like, yeah, let's go bicycling. Let's go bicycling. It's training. Think, it's training. training. And they, Alvin, little Al, four-year-old Alvin's always like, yeah, I'm training. <laughs> I'm getting stronger. <laughs> can, you, can you weigh me when he wants to get his height checked? Can you weigh me? <laughs> let's see if I grew any stronger and taller yet. I think the important point of why we're sharing a lot of this is just you know I think 
it's so valuable in your children's lives to share with them what you're passionate about and inspired about and what you think is valuable um, to have in your own life. You know, I think if you you do your own things, but you think, oh, well, I'm an adult and doing my stuff, the kids are, they don't, you know, they're too little to understand or to try or to be a part of this. You know, you miss out on this amazing opportunity to just um, grow together, inspire your children towards, you know, trying new things and exploring and growing. And, you know, kids love to model after their parents. So give them those opportunities whenever you can. You know, don't don't just say, oh, you know, it's grown up stuff. You go do your own thing, um, but involve them in, in the things that you yourself are passionate about. And I think there's so much power there. And I think like that's kind of the what we're getting at from sharing this is just how, you know, not that all these things are what everybody should be doing, but I think everybody has the unique things that are special in their family. And I think the takeaway here is just to try to involve your kids whenever you can. Most of the times there's always a way you can involve them. Even for instance, you know, with our work, we, we do a lot of home renovation and, um, home repair. Right. And we bring the kids with us or, you know, even we, we, we have them yeah. there right next to us. Last four weeks, been we've been renovating our own kitchen in our primary residence here. And they've been, they've they've been, been intimately involved. They've been watching it. They've been taking it in. They've <laughs> been telling us what we should do. <laughs> when we got our dumpster right in our driveway, Valen takes his sketch pad and draws a crayon picture of the dumpster. It's funny. <laughs> it was and because inspired we, to make a sketch And because we it. had the dumpster, we were like, hey, let's do a yard cleanup. Because there was some garbage around the beach that the, by the lake we live by. And so we took our um, wheelbarrow wheelbarrow, and said, hey, kids, come along, put on your gloves, and we're going to clean up the, the trash. And so we did this huge, massive cleanup. We had like five, six huge construction, construction bags, bags full, full of, of garbage. garbage. And then, you know, the ne- the follow- even today or yesterday, That's Valen like goes on hobby. his... You know, they go around collecting garbage, which is pretty awesome. You know, this four and six-year-old going into the woods collecting garbage and putting it into the wheelbarrow. <laughs> yeah, they bring it in and they're like, look what we got. They get so much of it. I it's know, like, it's, ugh. It's concerning how much garbage there is. It but is. But yeah, no. We're making a dent and hopefully cleaning the... Uh, the environment pretty well. Right. But I think, yeah, what you said about involving the kids in things that you yourself are inspired by and enjoy. Mm -hmm. You know, I really enjoy being active, so I love the gymnastics. I love training them towards the gymnastics because it's something I'm interested in and I get a kick out of seeing them, you know, progress and advance in. And if it was just like, uh, okay, you know, let's put the put the TV on as a babysitter. I'm not inspired by seeing them watching TV. They're um, not learning anything. You know, you can make the argument that there is educational TV in which they are right. learning, you know, which, how to interact. Which I'm and not behave. saying we never use. Yeah, we definitely do now and then. But um, it's so much more impactful and life. Um, s- s- Things stay with you a lot longer if you're experiencing them in real life yourself versus passively watching right. characters, you know, doing different things. Right. So right. Like now, like when Valen says, let's go for a bike ride. I'm like, yes, I love bike rides. This will be a fun thing to do that I'll enjoy myself. Let's do it. Right. And just having those things. Um, or in- involving them in little tasks. Like when I fold the laundry. The kids like to get involved. So usually I'll give them the towels because those are very simple to fold. And they'll sit there and they're learning, you know, the domestic tasks of laundry. And it's part of what you do in a household, you know, and they fold the towels. They they love that they can be involved in this helping the family activity. And it's it's memory building, you know, and it's also creating good habits for the future. When I cook, especially breakfast time, the kids love to come down and help me crack the eggs and put them in the fry pan and cook breakfast, which is basically them watching the eggs fry and feeling very important. I'm cooking right now. (laughs) But, um, you know, just sharing those moments means they're not going to grow up afraid of the stove and cooking and laundry and knowing how to, yeah. Right. They're going to, you know, and I think these are such important skills that a lot of times in a busy lifestyle, 
when, you know, we as parents are, you know, juggling a lot of things or we're working, you know, we tend to not include our kids in those activities for the sake of, you know, saving time and just being more efficient if we do it ourselves or not even thinking that it could have value for our kids observing and taking part in those activities. And so, you know, regarding the the home renovation stuff, you know, our kids have been seeing us do this for years. They become familiar with household tools like a hammer and a screwdriver and they know how to use them. And, you know, just just today, well, yesterday, we went shopping and Valen bought himself a little secondhand um, lap, lap desk. desk that he could sit and draw his his coloring pages with. And it it was not completely right in a certain area. So he took a hammer <laughs> and he started like hammering the nails back into the desk because they'd come a little bit loose. And then he's like, oh. I need a screwdriver. This screw needs to go in a little deeper. So he got a screwdriver and he was screwing the screw. Completely self-sufficient. Working on this desk with these tools that he's, you know, he knows how to use now because he's seen mommy and daddy use them. And he was able to take this little desk that he knew wasn't working as it should and actually fix it himself, which is huge. There's a lot of adults in life who don't even know how to or do that. Or just too afraid to even try. Right, like they're like, oh, I'm not gonna touch that. This thing's a little broken. I gotta hire gotta someone. Go in the garbage right. or whatever, you know? Um, and so that was a proud moment too, just, you know, realizing that him seeing us, you know, n use these tools and let him be by our side when we are using them, showing him how to use them carefully and appropriately, meant that he now has a skill and he can use it. And it's going to be huge in his life. You know, he's not going to be afraid to pick up a hammer and a screwdriver when something breaks and try to fix it. And I think that that's an awesome life skill. And so I think that's kind of the, the point we're making here is just that, you know, there's so much value that is being overlooked, I think, in society today on how important these activities are these connections that kids make with their parents on a day-to-day -day basis. The little things, the big things, the hobbies, the things that spark joy in their parents and that they learn to enjoy as well. I mean, there's certain things that we like to do that the kids perhaps would find boring, so that's okay, but they can see it and observe it and try it once in, uh, once in a while. And I think that that's so important. And I think a lot of times in our very fast-paced, working corporate lifestyle that gets kind of pushed um pushed under the the carpet and forgotten about and i think it is really detrimental mm -hmm. to our children because right. they are missing out on on these life lessons that have been something you know for thousands of years that's just what people did you know right. the grandparents and the parents pass on to the children their families' ways of doing things, their trades, their professions, their skills, their workmanship. But you know, if we outsource all that stuff to other, other people, including outsource our kids to other people um, so that we can do what we do, but our children never see it, they're going to grow up never really understanding their parents' hearts and never really growing to learn those skills and have to figure it out all on their own one day and it could have been so much easier if they had just been by their parents' side, observing, practicing, learning, and creating memories together. Right. So that's kind of what we're all about with why we parent the way we parent. Right. Some we things unconventional, some things not. But I think the takeaway is just that, you know, involve your kids in the things that, that matter to you because it matters to them to be a part of it. And you're, you know, helping them learn and grow and become great capable right. people it's just going to make it so natural you know for us to be a really united family who loves doing the things that our family does you know we taught them how to ski this winter and it took a lot of effort you know in the beginning to teach them to ski 
biking took a lot of effort in the beginning to teach them to bike. Swimming takes a lot of effort. Hiking but once, took a lot of effort. Hiking took a lot of effort. But once we, you know, broke through that effort, then it's just like, oh, let's do this all the time because it's wonderful. Let's let's hike all the time. Let's bike all the time. Let's swim all the time. The kids couldn't get enough of that pool in Florida. They were in it all the time. Okay. Um, skiing, too. It's like, oh, man, this is miserable the first day, <laughs> second day, third day. But the fourth day, well, well, we can go down this mountain. And next winter it's gonna be like wow we can try like new mountains we can actually like it can have be a fun. family activity to go out skiing for a day right and so it does take investment like Sunmary was saying you know you have to put on the brakes and you have to be like okay i'm gonna spend a whole day trying to teach my child how to ride a bike and it will take probably more than one day to do it but then eventually it won't be this labor It'll actually just be, you know, a fun, enjoyable activity that you guys can do together on a common, common thing that you would both enjoy. And that's the beauty of parenthood is this, this, this amazing opportunity you have to help a little person learn these skills and grow to, to be capable and do things alongside you. And it's such a rewarding, beautiful journey to go on. So I feel like, you know, don't miss that opportunity. If you have kids, you know, try to involve them whenever you can. Because, you know, yeah, it may be not so great in the beginning, but eventually, you know, the more you do it together, the more natural it become and the happier you and they will be together in these shared activities and moments that we hope you enjoyed our show we hope you take some action you know raise those kids um you know in a way that you, you you'll naturally love just spending time they'll love spending time with you you have common interests common ideals common goals common activities and that'll just make you a stronger more solid family who just will you know over the years grow stronger and stronger together thank you godspeed